many of you have ever been discriminated against because of your gender? How many of you have known someone who has been discriminated against because of their gender? So we've all either been we've all either faced gender discrimination or known someone who has. I don't know about you, but that's very discomforting. I mean, even with the dramatic changes and the many obstacles we have overcome, gender inequality still seems to be very prevalent. Okay, so what is gender equality? Gender equality, also known as sexual equality or the equality of sexes, is a state of equal ease of access and opportunities regardless of one's gender. This includes economic participation and decision making, the state of valuing different behaviors and aspirations and needs equally. Gender equality is a human right, a necessity. Gender discrimination is rooted deep into the many different cultures found here in Kenya. Pervasive discrimination and cultural norms have deeply influenced women's land tenures, especially customary laws that, that virtually all ethnic groups deny women rights of inheritance, despite the country taking initiatives to, despite the country taking initiatives to strengthen women's ra land rights by passing the Matrimonial Property Act of 2013. In Kenya, land is, a, in Kenya, land. In Kenya, there are many view, there, there's a lot of patriarchal views when it comes to land, as it is seen for the boy child. Automatically, the girl child's role is just to be married off. Women and girls in Kenya are being forced into many early marriages. For many, this means that their school careers would inevitably fall into pieces as they are expected to take the role of a good wife, bear children, raise them, presumably alone, cook, clean, be of service to her husband and repeat. Take Elizabeth, for example, was barred from attending school by her parents and was planned to be subjected into FGM and being married off. But at the tender age of 16, she ran away and found refuge at her aunt's place. Sadly, this didn't last long. As her father came and forcefully removed her, she ran away and three days later, she found refuge at a rescue center for girls. Again, her father showed up and tried to remove her. Luckily, this time, the management came and threatened him with police actions. He left and did not return. For many, their stories do not always end up the same. Well, at least not like Elizabeth. Some don't even know that there is a way out, that they're allowed to want much more. I mean, it's the only life we know. Who are they not to comply? Well, let me echo the words of the wise Matthew Scully. Some traditions and habits are just that. Comfortable excuses to let things be, even when they're unjust and unworthy. Cultural practices like FGM, early marriage, and restricting girls from attending the highest possible education are just that. Unworthy, unjust, and plain wrong. Gender discrimination is also being faced in urban areas as well as women still remain underrepresented in, in decision-making and political leadership. The Kenyan constitution states that a third of the parliament seats must be, must be, that a third of the parliament seats must be held by women. Though currently, only a fifth of those seats are actually held by women. Kenya's patriarchal views on women taking part in elections or being part of the parliament have resulted in many being physically and verbally assaulted. According to our local gazette, women representatives have been labeled as flower girls, slay queen, a waste of tax paper money. Well, let me reassure you this, this is far from the truth. Take a look at Billy Odambo an inspiring role model and MP, known for, sponsoring the victim, known for sponsoring the victim, known for sponsoring the victim, known for sponsoring the victim, the... Take a look at Nuri Odeambo, known for sponsoring the bill that prevents re-victimization in the justice, in the court. So while we have made enormous strides towards gender equality, we still have a long way to go. 
and it's up to each and every one of us to come together and come up with possible solutions, not just for the women in Kenya, but for women around the world. But I'll give you a few head starts. One, share the care, especially in household and childcare. Roles like cooking and cleaning, these aren't just roles for women. Men can partake in these roles as well. Two, call out us. Call out harassment or sexual abuse. Call out harassment from cat calling to mansplaining to, sex, to sexual inappropriate jokes. Three, women get involved in politics. Say what you think. And men, consider voting for very many qualified women. Take a look at Ellen Silif Johnson of Liberia. Four, encourage, teach girls their worth. Encourage them to speak out and assert themselves. Change the language and the narrative that discourages them to do so. Say they are bold, not bossy. Five, remember girls own their bodies and have a right to make decisions about them. And finally, six, don't hate women. Just don't. Gender equality is a fundamental human right and essential to achieving a peaceful society. Together, I know that we can make this happen. But before I leave, let me end by qu quoting Sir John Truth. If the first woman God made was able, if the first woman God made was able to turn this world upside down, these women together ought to be able to turn it right again. Thank you. Thank you.